Well, boys and girls, in just about an hour and a half, we have the second round of the FCS playoffs. The round of 16 is coming. And first things first, New Hampshire taking on Holy Cross, the number eight seed. It's going to be a good one. Going to be a good one. Max Brosmer, Dylan Lobb, you know, and company, you know, are, are just, they, they, were able to get past Fordham last week, and now they face Matthew Sluka, you know, Jalen Coker, and a good Holy Cross team that can also score in bunches. They can also score a lot of points. This one is going to be a good one. You know, the winner will get either Delaware or South Dakota State in the quarterfinal. And I mean, they're, 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 this is this is gonna be this is gonna be a good one, you know. Sluka can also run the ball, so you know, they got, you know, New Hampshire's gonna have to contain that. So that's gonna be something interesting there. Um, there's also Gardner Webb and William and Mary. William and Mary, the number five seed, Gardner Webb, the Big South champ, you know, and with Bailey Fisher, Nari Gaither. You know, running the show on offense, and then on, you know, on the other side for William and Mary, you know, you have Darius Wilson, um, you know, a dual threat quarterback who, you know, he doesn't have the flashy stats, you know, only 13 touchdown passes, the six picks, but he also has run for over 400 yards and four touchdowns. There's also the running back kick return combination. You know, a Bronson Yoder, you know, on the offensive side of the football. And this one here, this one is going to be another good one because Gardner Webb ran all over Eastern Kentucky last week. We'll see if they can do that again. You know, because, I mean, this one's, this one's going to be a game where running the ball is going to be, you know, it's going to be. A lot like these two teams are gonna run the ball all day long in this game. They're gonna be running the ball. Let me tell you. So, you know, we'll see what happens here because I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm interested. I'm interested because I mean, you know, we but Mary has a really good defense that could get to the quarterback. You know, and there's also Ty French on the other side for Gardner Webb who can get to the to the quarterback, but, you know, somebody's going to win in the trenches in this one, and the winner of this will get either Weaver State or Montana State in the quarterfinal, and then Delaware, South Dakota State, again, South Dakota State, you know, Mark Gronowski and company have been, you know, just cruising along through the season, again, Isaiah Davis, you know, also, you know, on the offensive side, for the Jack Rabbits and and John Stiegelmeyer has his Jack Rabbits crew ready to go as the number one team in the country. You know, not just the number one seed, the number one team in the country, the team that, you know, is built for a national championship. But the question is, is can South Dakota State do it? You know, Delaware now, you know, you know, they're going to have to get Nolan Henderson going a little bit more. He's going to have to play an even more perfect game against a really good Jack Rabbit defense. You know, I mean, again, the Blue Hens defense is also really good. We've talked about, you know, some of their guys on defense like Johnny Buchanan and Nola Pluck. Or Nola Plack, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see. You know, like Kid Delaware, you know, contain, you know, this running game, this offense, this defense, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it, it's going to be something. And then, you know, Weber State, Montana State, going to be a good one. Bronson Barron, you know, on, on the side for the Wildcats, along with Winston Reed and Eddie Heckard. <laughs> Definitely a fun, fun matchup. And then 
the national runner-up from last year, Tommy Balot, is back. You know, you know the, there's also Ty Okada, who's also back. Callahan O'Reilly, you know. And, I mean, this is going to be the first rematch in these playoffs here. We might have some more down the line. But, at the moment, you know, Weber State, they want to run. Montana State, mm, I don't know. We'll see if Isaiah Fonse will play in this game either. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The winner will get Gardner Webb or William and Mary. And then there's also Abraham Williams. You know, watch out for him. He, you know, he's been returning kicks for touchdowns all season for Weeper. In you know, in a season that has been insane. You know, for Weeper State again. They got robbed of a seed, you know, and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Again, this is going to be an interesting rematch. Then you go to the bottom half of the bracket here. You know, Furman taking on UIW. Now, Incarnate Word is losing their coach, J.J. Ken. Um, he has gone up to somewhere. I forgot where. But it is what it is. But Tyler Huff last week, you know, was on fire. You know, definitely a really good quarterback for the Paladins. And, you know, with guys like Dominic Roberto, you know, you know, Brandon, Braden Gilby, you know, also just been on a tear on defense. I mean, but the guy we want to talk about, the guy the guy who should win the Walter Payton, Lindsey Scott Jr. 50 touchdowns this year, passing seven more on the ground. And he's got, you know, a really good set of receivers and stuff like that. Taylor Grimes being one of the big ones, you know, with 13 touchdown catches, nearly a thousand yards receiving and everything like that. And there's also, you know, on the other side, you know, Furman's tight end Ryan Miller. You know, so um, the Paladins need to stop the pass of Lindsey Scott because this man can throw it. This man can sling it. I mean, there's just so many guys. Again, Derry Chafin. You know, I mean, you know, Marcus Cooper. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just insane for UIW. It's just insane. You know, I will, I will. How will they deal with, how will the Cardinals deal with lost their head coach? You know, he's, I believe he's sticking around till the end of the playoffs. But, again, who knows? The winner of this will get Richmond or Sacramento State in the quarterfinals. So, you, so, J.G. Ken has built a really good team, you know. In his first year, now he's gone. It was just really saying something. And then Southeastern Louisiana goes up against the number six seed, Sanford. And again, Cephas Johnson, Dante Daniels, Cy Alexander, you know, the same faces that we talked about last week who were making big plays. And on the other side, Sanford has Michael Hears, who's also been, you know, just just throwing really good, you know, really good statistics. 35 touchdowns, three picks. That's really good. Jay Stanton also, you know, he doesn't have, you know, the flashy running back stats of, you know, hey, I ran for a thousand yards. He's only like a 680 yard rusher, but he also has 31 receptions on the year. The Nathan East on the defensive side, also really good quarter, um, a really good linebacker, not, not quarterback. Um, Southeast Louisiana has multiple threats again. Gage Larbadane, we talked about him, Carlos Washington, Jesse Britt, I mean, just really good, really good, and that defense, they can pick the ball off, but here's, he, again, this is a guy who doesn't throw interceptions, he just, he just completes the ball, you know, when you have guys like Chandler Smith and Kendall Watson on one side of the ball, you know, This this one's gonna be something, but the defense for Sanford is the worry here. You know they've allowed so many yards over the past couple weeks. You know in their last few regular season games, you know it's it's wild. So 
Uh, I expect a lot of points, a lot of yards. And the winner, oh, they're going to get either Montana or North Dakota State. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see the right there. And then, you know, two Blue Bloods, the FCS, meet up. North Dakota State, the number three seed, and Montana, 8-4. They somehow made it to the playoffs, proved the doubters wrong. When they won their first playoff game against SEMO, and now Lucas Johnson, Bobby Hawk, you know, Robbie Hawk, and also Patrick O'Connell go up to the Fargo Dome to face Cam Miller, the dynamic Hunter Lipke, and then, you know, again, just a really good defense, a really good old line, you know, the defending national champions who've won nine of the last 11 titles, just winning home playoff games like it's nothing. We'll see, you know, again, it comes down to the trenches. It comes down to the trenches. And I mean, my goodness, this North Dakota State team can run the ball. They can run the ball. To Merrick Williams, Kobe Johnson, also leading, you know, a, a triple header attack. And the Grizz, you know, remember that game against Montana State, they allowed so many rush yards, it wasn't even funny. Uh, we'll see if the Grizz can stop North Dakota State at all because I don't know, you know, the physicality is a factor. And that's the biggest thing in this game is the physicality. Who's going to be more physical? And North Dakota State has proven that, you know, they can't be just way more physical than everybody else. And that's why they've won nine out of the last 11 national titles. The winner of this will get either Sela or Sanford in the quarterfinal. And then last but not least, Richmond and Sacramento State. Reese Sudinski played well last week. He needs to play well yet again. You know, Jacob Harris, Tristan Wheeler, you know, also on, you know, on the Spiders, you know, offense and defense respectively that can make big plays. And then on first Sacramento skate, you know, Cam Scadabo over, over 1,200 yards rushing, you know, he can also catch the ball out the backfield. It's also Marshall Martin, you know, who can make some plays, you know, at tight end. He's been making plays. He's got eight TDs on the year. You know, and I mean, this this Richmond team was able to, you know, just pass the ball all over Davidson. But can they do that again, you know, against Sacramento State? You know, there's a quarterback rotation for Sacramento State, which, you know, doesn't always work out, but it works out, you know, it worked out for the Hornets this year with Jake Dunaway and Asher O'Hara, you know, two guys who have different styles, but they can do, you know, something equally as, they're both equally as potent is what I'm trying to say. Honestly, Sacramento State, you know, if they win this game, they'll get Furman or UIW. But if Richmond wins, if Richmond upsets Sacramento State, which some people have predicted, you know, there is a chance, then they'll get a quarterfinal game. So the quarterfinals are looking like, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what in the world, what in the world are we going to get in these quarterfinals? The matchup possibilities are endless. And the coaching changes in the FCS that have impacted the playoffs so far might continue to impact. We'll see. You know, as as the year draws to a close and the, and the season winds down. We'll see. We'll see what happens in these playoffs today. We got an hour or so until they start and all the games are on ESPN Plus today. No national ESPN telecast today. So, you know, it is what it is there. Until tonight, I'll see you all later. Take care, everybody.